Today, I'm here at an event organized by the Malta Insurance Association with presentations by the Civil Protection Department. We're here to discuss EVs and the safety considerations around them. In attendance are car dealerships, mechanics, and everyone else in between who needs to know this information. I'm Luke, welcome to this episode of The Future is Electric. Right, I've once again stolen or borrowed my son's toys for the purpose of explaining in a video. So, <laughs> Malta now has nearly 30,000 cars with lithium ion batteries inside them. Half of those are fully electric and the other half are split between plug-in hybrids and hybrids. Now, when seen as a percentage of the overall fleet, the numbers are still small, around 7% of the overall Maltese fleet. But that's not the data we should be looking at. We should be looking at what is changing in the market. And Q4 of 2024 was a record year. For every three electric vehicles added to the Maltese roads, just one petrol car was added. A ratio of three is to one. So the EVs are coming and they are coming in very fast, which is why conferences like this one are so important for all the stakeholders to understand this new dimension and safety considerations around electric vehicles. We welcome you to the world of electric vehicles. They are here and it's up to us to handle them. Li naidu li electric vehicles umma perikoluzi a shiaddu ina naseb li at this point in time pala stat tafad mu wix minnu mu wix minnu kem lokalment u kem fid dinja. Right? Statistika sa end of June 2024 في الدنيا قلنا يقول لك إنهم أربعين مليون اللوم الخاطر الخمسة مليون في الفترة اللي تدا نيو سوكول. There are only five hundred and eleven verified EV fires. All right, let's talk lithium-ion batteries and the concerns around them. So I have one right here. This is what looks like a AAA battery. is actually a lithium-ion battery cell known as the 18650 cell and actually this battery cell you can actually find in some electric vehicles and some others they'll be slightly larger and then in most electric vehicles we see nowadays the batteries themselves are in the shape of pouches or larger rectangular units but the concepts i'm about to explain with this battery and those exactly the same so inside the shell are two essentially different materials we've got the anode and the cathode now these are separated by an electrolyte and they're placed together forming a long film that is rolled up and then eventually slotted in to the battery cell. Now during charge and discharge cycles, electrons are going to flow from one side to the other. So what's the problem? The problem is if you get a short circuit between the two sides of that battery because that can lead to a spark and the spark can lead to a fire. Now, electric vehicles don't have just one battery cell. They have hundreds, if not thousands of these cells. So the danger here is that if one of these cells has a problem and it starts to catch fire, that it could pass on that heat and fire to the cells neighboring next to it. What's this? This is called thermal runaway. And this is the problem we face with electric vehicles nowadays. <laughs> Doesn't sound so good, does it? But the main consideration here is the probability. So the same technology that is in electric cars is in our cell phones, is in our laptops, and is in every portable electronic device we use and know today. The same devices we take on board planes, the same battery cells, which even planes nowadays have. So the consideration here is how worried should we be that this will happen? While it is possible, it is not really probable. And the numbers are showing us this, that electric vehicles with lithium-ion technology are actually far less likely to catch fire compared to internal combustion counterparts. So if you've never been worrying of your internal combustion car catching fire, then you shouldn't be worried about your electric car one. <laughs> Uh, 
so what have we learned we've just been to a very interesting presentation by the civil protection department who updated us on a number of things and the first thing they started the session with is pointing out the fact that it is overwhelmingly clear that electric vehicles are far less likely to catch fire when compared to traditional cars. This is a very good starting point. However, fires can still happen and how you treat those fires changes a bit in the dynamics. Other things they've pointed out is that in Malta we currently have no place to store damaged lithium-ion battery packs, which creates quite a bit of a problem because these battery packs are possibly sitting in underground garages where, where they to ignite again over there that could create major issues. So definitely the space where these batteries can be quarantined is required as soon as possible or possibly dismantled in a safe manner before being hopefully my my take on this is that we would recycle them here in Malta and not ship them to be recycled. I think there is gold in the car, not literal gold, but there's a lot of expensive metals in the car. I'd rather we keep it here locally than ship it out to another country and use it ourselves. Another problem that's sort of being created is that when one of these cars is involved in an accident, sort of nobody knows where to take it. Again, because we do not have a quarantining zone. The tow truck, of course, doesn't want to keep it. The fire brigade don't want to keep it. The owner doesn't want to keep it. The dealership's not going to be. So we need to identify a place where these cars can be quarantined until they are deemed safe. All in all, I, thought, I think it was a very interesting and informative session and definitely gets us one step closer. If you want to share your thoughts, make sure you leave them in the comments below. As always, I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric.